it's because it's serving a purpose for us on some level. Yeah. And so we are getting something from that disconnect, even though it may cause us pain. One of the great challenges people face in the world today is this profound sense of being lonely. We have all the comforts in the world, we can get anywhere, do anything, and yet we're lonelier now than ever. What do you think is going on here? You know, it's a great question. One of the biggest fears that I hear when I get um, into a session with somebody is they're going to die alone. Mm. Even if they're already in a relationship, that's their biggest fear. And what I have found is that loneliness really is um, a sense, it's, it's a sense of separation between yourself and even the universe around you, right? Um, one of the reasons why, again, why I do meditation is because in meditation you don't feel lonely or when you have a spiritual practice you don't feel lonely. You really are very fed. You, you're feeling, you know, you're receiving the love that's around you. So I, I'm, I'm even going to challenge it and say there really is no such thing as loneliness. It's, it's again, it's a judgment that somebody makes mm -hmm. about their life when you're really surrounded by, you know, this universe that's constantly trying to gift to us all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, when I hear the word lonely, what I hear is I translate it into not connected. Mm -hmm. And you think about the way the world used to be before we had TV and air conditioning. As you would sit down on your porch, and if somebody was on the porch, you'd be walking through the neighborhood, you'd walk up and talk to them. People were connected, they knew their neighbors. Just like so many of us want to go and watch our favorite TV show, you know, and go online and do this, and we feel like we're being nourished that way, but we're not. It's an illusion. It's stimulating the brain chemicals of connection to real people, but we're not really connecting. Mm -hmm. And one other thing on loneliness is, really it's the aging people that are most lonely. Yeah. And as, as children, uh, as growing up adults, but we, with our parents, we don't realize how important it is until we get to that place where you really feel disconnected completely. People don't see you as much, people don't acknowledge you. You may not feel like you're connecting with the world. And particularly when people are sick, mm. Uh, if you have never been sick, you don't know how powerful it is just to have somebody sitting next to you and holding your hand or maybe reading a book to you. And so many times we don't visit our older, older people because we think, well, what can I say? What can I do? I can't entertain them. And just being present is mm -hmm. such a, a wonderful experience for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling lonely, it's like, okay, something about you is feeling unfulfilled. So therefore, you know that it's time for a change, some kind of change. Mm. So, so what can you do to fill that void, whatever it is? So it's a void in something. And here's the thing, you can be feel lonely even when you're in a relationship, like such as marriage. Um, and it, once again, it goes back to the stressors that we have in life and all of the distractions. And also our different love languages that we express to each other. You know, maybe, maybe we're not expressing what we need. So that connectedness is so important. I, I, I agree with that completely. So I would say that we need to just reach out to each other and really look for that connection. And you know, if someone feels lonely, you can, you can bet that there's thousands of other people out there that feel the same. So, so just, just go try something that you love, like volunteer, um, you know, you mentioned older people, you know, go, go to a convalescent home, you know, wh whatever you can do to reach out and, and, and do the things that you love, mm -hmm. and you'll find people that love the same kind of thing. I think that loneliness is a, um, an interpretation of how the mind is working. I think the mind creates loneliness. I don't think that being alone creates loneliness. Right, I don't right. think that being with people creates um, non-loneliness. I think you can be in a crowd right. of people, you could be in, a, in yeah. a marriage and you could feel lonely. So it's really the way that your your mind is interpreting the, the incoming data of the world around you. And so in I agree in the sense that there, there is loneliness is, a crea is our own creation. Mm -hmm and a creation of the mind. If our minds are creating loneliness or any other feeling of expression, it's because it's serving a purpose for us on some level. Yeah. And so we are getting something from that disconnect, even mm -hmm. though it may cause us pain. 
I mean, there's a secondary gain in, in everything that we experience and everything that our mind is producing for ourselves. So I, you know, you have to kind of look at what that's doing for you and then find another coping mechanism that's actually going to be more beneficial. You're right, yeah. Leslie. What I would ask my client is, what are you going to have to give up right. in order to move forward that's from right. this? That's a great mm -hmm. question. That's a great yeah, and loneliness, you know, to kind of sum up, loneliness is something that's a very profound experience for people, mm -hmm. right? And for some people, it is a coping or even a mechanism or even a tool that's right. to help them get through their day. And for someone watching, if they want to address a profound sense of loneliness, they can address that by looking at connection and looking at how they can bridge a tactile, physical connection with other people and start to make steps in that direction. And then perhaps that tool won't be as necessary. Mm -hmm.